Narendra Modi pointed out his government's attempt to combat black money would not stop with demonetization. Instead, it would include a package of measures of which a legislation to prohibit Benami transactions in property was an important one. Real estate is one of the largest repositories of undeclared income. After demonetization, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will next crack the whip on Benami property holders. The new Benami Act came into effect from the 1st of November and it prohibits illegal Benami transactions under which up to seven years of imprisonment and penalty for those indulging in such activities could be handed out. To talk more on this, we have with us Sri Ved Jain. He is the Vice President of the Associated Chambers of Commerce and Industry of India. Also with us is Mr. Harmeet Chavla. He's an expert on real estate. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us on Late Edition this evening. Uh, Mr. Chavla, first I would want you to explain to our viewers what exactly is a Benami property. So, uh, Benami property is anything where, you know, uh, the buyer of the property, hmm. a buyer of any, uh, you know, uh, l l take it from a perspective of, let's say, real estate or property. You have a buyer who doesn't have the requisite financial transactions which are emanating coming out of his account. So the beneficiary actually is somebody else. The property is held in name of somebody else. Mm -hmm. The movement of money is not from the person who owns the property. In a very simplistic way if, if we put it across. So if Mr. A is the guy, gentleman who owns, uh, owns real estate mm -hmm. and the money flow is happening from B and C. Right. right, and the transaction or the movement of money is questionable. That's where how the Benami property kicks in. Benami property would also include gold, stocks, yes. and other. Yes, yes. So real estate is there. Anything where which you own, which you uh, cannot justify the payments or the financial transactions to it, would ideally come into Benami property. All right, uh, Mr. Chen. We've seen Prime Minister say that till now the Benami prohibition uh, act which was started, which was introduced in 1988, that had been lying dormant. Why was it so? See, uh, in 1988, if you will recall, an ordinance was issued for introducing this Benami Prohibition of Transaction Act. And that was a very small act comprising of nine sections only. And the objective of this act was to overcome the civil law, which permitted till that day for a person to have own a Benami property and Benami owner was entitled to recover it from the real owner. As we were talking earlier about what is the Benami property, mm. Benami property is a defined as a Benami, a transaction in which the money or something is transferred or is owned by a person where the consideration has been provided by the somebody else and such property is held for the immediate or ultimate benefit of the person who has provided for the consideration. And normally what happens is people buy property in the name when you don't have an accounted mm -hmm. source, etc. Mm -hmm. in the name of various people who, who, in whom you repose confidence. Your driver, your PN, your brother-in-law, your sister-in-law, etc. you buy the property. Till 1988, it was permissible under the law that in case you establish that this property has been purchased by me in Benami name of my sister-in-law or a brother-in-law or my driver and I can establish my consideration having paid from my source That's then, I can, source then I can recover then whatever only I can establish mm -hmm. okay. I could recover that property and get back that property that was permissible till 1988 because mm -hmm. the civil law says property belong to a person who has provided the consideration from where the money has flown in not by the person in whose name the property is registered or in his possession the property is there. As you were asking the question, the property includes movable and immovable. It's not a mm. landed building, mm. anything which is can be there. It can be a bond, it can be a gold, it can be share, it can be any uh, 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 important item, etc., whatever it is. Now, why it was lying dormant is the question. In 1988, we had a nine section, and there was two sections which says there is a prohibition thereafter to enter into Benami transaction thereafter from the, the 1988 and then they said ki that such property which is transaction which is entered into after 1988 then that property can be acquired and confiscated and for that purpose it was provided that there will be an educating authority which will follow the procedure and prescri as may be prescribed mm -hmm. but unfortunately no rules were notified from thereafter 
So with the result that the, though the section 4, which is the more important section of that act, continues to be in operation where the Benamidar could not recover the property, uh, beneficial owner could not recover the property from the person in whose name mm, the property was registered, but the government action of confiscating the pro Benami property did not come into operation, so 1988. Now in the year 2016, this bill has been passed with the parliament and from 1st November 2016, this bill has been now notified, so mm. now whatever. Now as per this provision, now this property, whosoever is there can be confiscated and that property can be now, of course, not only the Benami Dar, also the person who has provided the beneficiary and the person who has abetted in carrying out mm -hmm. this transaction, all three can be prosecuted and there can be an imprisonment for them for all mm -hmm. these people and of course there can be a penalty for entering into this transaction so there are three uh, issues which have come into operation so this was an 88 act and which is not there now the question is why it was not brought into operation this is the issue mm -hmm. which is a larger issue in the yeah. issue the issue is the government having enacted the law in 1988 probably never at that point of time thought fit that the objective was to get hold of the people who buy this property in Benamina. Probably at that point in time, the objective was more on the focus on the amend the civil law, a right between the Benami owner and the be beneficial owner. So that mm -hmm. was, the, I believe, the objective. Basically. All right, you're talking of the objectives. Now, let's talk of the timing as well. We've seen Prime Minister talk of how huge is this uh, net of black money. So you're from real estate. I would want you to tell us how massive and how mammoth is this net of the uh, Benami properties? Uh, going by, you know, the figures uh, by the IT department, 6% is what normally they, you know, when they do these raids and all, they, uh, they, they unearth that kind of money, which is cash. So about 94% of the money, hmm. which is not caught, let us say for the sake of this, generally buy goes, in, goes into movable and movable property. If we pick up the last 15, 20 years, there has been, you know, that spurt which has come in and uh, where we said that real estate has really grown, <coughs> land prices have go gone over the moon. There has been a huge amount of buying, huge amount of buying on land, uh, commercial, there has been uh, a huge, you know, survey of a lot of people w going into engineering colleges, medical colleges. So, you know, these are, these have been, these are assets moving from, uh, you know, land, just pure mm -hmm. agricultural land, going up to assets which are actually giving you business returns. So, a lot of the money has actually been parked over here. And this was the app theater which was created to mm -hmm. also give impetus to real estate in the terms that you know there is an actual demand while the whole entire entity and the game was speculation because when people put in their Benami, when they put in their money into land or they put into assets which were already there, they also needed exit. Hmm. Yeah. So for, cre for creating that exit route, you also create that entire theater where the speculation game has to be created otherwise you don't get an exit mm. so I, I would say that you know uh, uh, if today what has come back to the bank is X figure uh, the money that would be parked today in real estate would be uh, a wild guess it will be I mean probably beyond my mathematical calculation okay it, it would be beyond your mathematical um, calculations uh, Mr. Jain given the amendments which have been put through this act the 1988 act uh, would it be feasible enough when we say that uh, the Prime Minister says that, you know, it will be uh, the Benami properties for the past 70 years, the corruption and the black money for the past 70 years will be cracked. Uh, give us more on that. How do you analyze the amendments which have been put through uh, the 1988 Act? See, it is a comprehensive act. Hmm. No? As I said, it was earlier nine section and now it is a full-fledged uh, provision of Benami act, Transaction Act and it virtually has been rewritten. It has provided full mechanism how to identify, how to uh, investigate, how to educate, how to appeal on the Benami. Now when we are talking of the Benami property, let's make first try to find, uh, make a difference where the people do indulge in Benami, why it is so. If it is a movable property like cash or a gold, there is no need to put a name. You can mm -hmm. own it in your name, you can keep it with you, that's mm -hmm. it, there is no Benami. Similarly, any uh, other movable thing mm -hmm. which you can manage with yourself is there. Benami comes where you have to give a name. It's a real estate, mm. shares, equity investment, or debentures, bond, bank deposit, etc. You open a bank account in different name, etc. And that's a, that's a where you need to give a name. Mm -hmm. So I give a name of a person A where I am the beneficial owner. So it becomes a, a Benami transaction. Now your question is that how it is going to do it in the, in the sense that as the Prime Minister said for the last 70 years, 
this has been going unchecked and I want to bring it to transparency. I want to investigate and verify all this. Is it actually possible to implement this retrospectively? I No. Legally, it is permissible because mm -hmm. the prohibition of Benami Transaction Act says any Benami property held today is subject to this okay. act. And if investigating officer identifies the property and makes investigation and reaches a conclusion that yes, it is a Benami held, then it can definitely be confiscated irrespective of the time when it was acquired. There's no, no, no limitation mm -hmm. on that period. Mm -hmm. It should be a Benami today as on date whosoever is the owner in the record is not the real owner, then it can be investigated. Now, in that sense, there, there has to be now, let's look at it from the real estate perspective first, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that's a major Benami investment which comes into. Mm -hmm. By and large, other Benami do not come into such big operation. One of the reasons why Benami pro money came into the real estate is, people b make investment in of black money, finding out because where, what is the easiest way. When you go to the real estate, it says common phenomena, you buy a property for 10 lakh rupees, you pay by check rupees, 3 or 4 mm -hmm. lakh rupees, the 7 lakh rupees cash you pay, so you can get it out. Mm -hmm. So what has been done in the past, I believe the people, whosoever has got the black money, what they have, they have created some trail, etc. Major mon money being given in cash and a small part being given in check, check and being shown in the name of a driver or a peon or his close mm -hmm. relative that he has purchased this property mm -hmm. so that you get out of it. So that's a scenario. Now the situation is that how you are going to check all this record for the 70 years, that's a challenge in itself. In this regard, it looks to be a very attractive proposal that when we are having a war against the black money to go like this, but this has its own problem. And the best thing which the government can do is that first the government digitize the all land records right. across India. That's mm -hmm. a very, very important aspect. The moment digitization happens, everything will become a transparent mm. and people know who are the owner of which property etc and then we make land registration digitization online digitization registration mandatory in many of the state it is there but in many of the state it is not there mm -hmm. so once the land record get digitized registration is on uh, uh, digitized by digital mode then it will be very easy to identify that look this property in this name now when we are talking about the property and verification we need not confine ourselves to some big property in metropolitan city delhi bombay calcutta madras mm -hmm. etc it can be anywhere we need to be not agriculture so agriculture Rural is a major area, area yes, where the benami transaction can happen because mm -hmm. there and you do not know who is the owner who is doing the agriculture mm -hmm. and who is the beneficiary this is mm -hmm. a major challenge i am of this view that irrespective of the fact whatever the benefit which may get out of the Benami Transaction Act or this act, in case digitization happen, 90% of the civil dispute which normally, uh, normally arise in the family or the close person on the property will be done away. Because you have a digitized record, you know the person owner, you cannot manipulate when you go to the register, he knows who is the owner, hmm. who is the uh, chain. So there is no dispute. The dispute arises mainly because the records are not that not perfect. Yes. Secondly on this part, Many of the transactions people do enter into in the agreement, etc., and they try to avoid that agreement getting registered because of the high stamp duty and the cascading effect of the stamp duty. Okay. For in order when we want to implement this all this prohibition of Benami Transaction Act, we need to facilitate the process of a land registration also by reducing the stamp duty rate and also allowing send credit of the duty the way we are doing in GST. One of the demand of the industry and across India, and I believe all experts, all economists agree on this issue, that when we are doing with GST, why don't we bring stamp duty also in its part, so that in case you have bought a property way back in 80s for 5 lakh rupees and you have paid 6%, 30,000 rupees thereof, today you sell for 7 lakh rupees, so you need to pay stamp duty on the difference amount only, not on the again the same mm. amount. If this thing happens probably, I believe many registration will happen everybody will try to get registered because there is no additional burden coming at all and in that process the state exchequer will also not be losing because the mm -hmm. number of transactions which will be entering into will increase by quantum jump and if that happens the volume and the money which they collect by stamp duty will be much more as compared to what they are getting as on date here. Alright, there is this amendment uh, to this wherein it says that uh, uh, the female spouse earlier the 1988 act had covered the female spouse unmarried daughter and co-pensioner uh, were part of this is registered in if the property is registered in name of these and now it has been expanded as member of Hindu undivided family or corporate firms companies and partners holding land in fiduciary uh, capacity in the name of the directors trustees also the property in the name of spouse and kids acquired from known source of income added to that lineal descendants and accidents now Explain to us more about this in the sense that we know it's a known source of income, but still 
you're talking of how mammoth and how massive is this net of Benami properties. But at the same time, we've often seen that properties pass down from generation to generation when you know the title remains unchanged but the owner and you know the the one under whom whose name the property is changes what can be done in that case how is how does the system track benami property you see <coughs> when this amendment was under with proposal mm -hmm. the parliament referred this matter to the parliamentary committee for examining all practical issues mm -hmm. and at that time this e these issues came up for consideration that when we are prohibiting Benami property, owner is one and the enjoyment is by the mm -hmm. different person. Let us visualize in what situation there can be different categories. You are a director of a company, property has been purchased by a company. And you are using the property from your known sources of income the company has mm -hmm. purchased. Mm -hmm. So we should, we cannot call it a Benami, Benami transaction. Yes. So this way various, uh, uh, whatever the eventuality and looking into the practical situation, mm -hmm. All exclusion has been provided. Similarly, it is very normal for a husband to buy a property in the name of the wife. Mm -hmm. So spouse have been exempted, children have been exempted, lineal ascendant, uh, the descendant has been exempted. In the case of other relative, exemption is not complete. It is only when it is jointly owned by the name. Both names appear, then it can be done this. If the brother and sisters are mm -hmm. not covered in that category. If two brothers are on uh, owning that property, then they have to be, one brother may have paid the consideration, but name of the both the brothers should appear. So that's a uh, mm -hmm. uh, act provide. Mm -hmm. Now coming to this issue is that how it is going to be operative and how it is going to be seen. The issue is that when the known sources of income are there, because when you can explain this property has been purchased from this source of income, then obviously the first doubt that this represent is some black money or undisclosed income that goes out. The only issue arises is ki what for this property is being transacted into. And now your question is that there have been old property inherited, etc. Mm -hmm. I believe in, case of, in the case of old property, inheritance is by only those persons who are the lineal descendant or yeah. other relative spouse. In case a property is, has been inherited from a person by way of a will, of which person the known sources of income are not known, mm -hmm. then it is definitely a Benami property. Right. You may buy a property in the name of an old man who may not be your relative, you have provided consultation and you have got a will drafted mm -hmm. by the gentleman, registered registered man, that after his death the property comes to you, but still it can be a Benami property from the day one you have bought it, the sources of income were not known. And there's, there's where digital would have. Now the question of yours is it how practical it will be and how operative it can be operative. That's a very large question, frankly. It, is, it, it poses a big, big challenge to the government to that mm -hmm. how they will be able to do it. It's not, I believe, an easy job done. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, it's not limited to the uh, metropolitan city. It is spread over across India and so many properties. Look at the Delhi. See, mm -hmm. Delhi, the DDA started giving property flats and the uh, right. plots to many people and for the last 40 years from 60s to 2000 before the DD allowed conversion of the power attorney or holder in the name of it, many property in Delhi are registered in the name of a person who is not the owner and power attorney holder is in jail. Right, right. But in that case, all what will be required to explain is the known sources of income from various bodies. All right, we'll hold this thought here, but at present we're heading for a short commercial break today. Significant would this prove to be in the longer run? See, I, I beg to differ with you on the fact that the genuine buyer would uh, suffer because the Benami property has nothing to do with the genuine buyer. You have genuine property, you have your consideration. A person with black money would be uh, comfortable buying a house worth, you know, crores, but a person, a genuine person who's earning for himself and the family would still think a little twice before uh, getting into that. So, so doesn't for, here... So for, for me, the point is, the you know, the where I see it, uh, one with the demonetization, with the Benami property, you're also moving into a situation where real estate and the way real estate is transacted, sold and done is also going in for a structural change. Mm -hmm. okay. So from here on, you know, uh, give it some time because these are short, the, the, we, we are still in the 50th day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these things, measures will start to pan out. There are a lot of things, other things that the government will come out with. But the point is for a, for a genuine buyer, there is going to be some level of rationalization of prices. Uh, when I say rationalization of price, you know, prices, I'm not saying it from the point of view whether the price will fall 30%, 20% with uh, the Benami property coming <coughs> and there is going to be a curve in terms of unnecessary investment into real estate. Right. There is going to be rationalization of prices in real estate. So you are getting more for the money that you're doing. Uh, when you go into the market, you, you, know, you, are, you know that the property that probably you're buying is much cleaner. Uh, there are no encumbrances on the on the on this or any kind of litigations on that. So I feel, on the contrary, uh, you know, I, what I would feel is that from here on, 
give it some time, maybe in a year's time. Once you go into the market, you're pretty much confident that you are buying, what you're buying in is the, is the right thing. So I feel for the genuine buyer, it is going to be absolutely uh, a great move. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who felt that, you know, parking their money into real estate, uh, speculatively, as I, I initially said, mm -hmm. was to create a theater where you also wanted an exit, so you wanted to actually create a halo effect where something which can be idly bought on a demand and supply at 2,000 rupees a square foot, you are leveling it out, taking it at about 10, 12,000 mm -hmm. rupees, so that you get an exit on your black money. So you're also making white. Mm -hmm. Now, all that, to a large extent, will be curbed. I'm not, I'm not going to say, and you know, uh, that 100% all, all is going to be uh, nipped in the butt. But to a large extent, if that comes in and people fear going in with that kind of uh, this thing, with the, you know, with the fact that the Benami property now has the prosecution coming on its on its uh, this thing, people will think twice before parking their money into real estate. All right, Mr. Jain, your clause, closing comments in the sense that first it was demonetization, then the target is Benami properties. Uh, the prime minister is leaving no stone unturned to rid the country of the image, you know, which haunts it when we talk of corruption and black money. See, uh, th these are the <coughs> various steps which are required when we want to clean up the society. Hmm. As you said, that this government came into power in May 2014, and uh, it started with SIT, then it came out with the Foreign Black Money Act, then it came out with the IDS-1, which we call it, then it came with the demonetization, and now the Prime Minister is hinting for uh, aggressive action on this Benavid Property Act. Now, see, in this when we look at this scenario, See, the Indian economic scenario is bound to change now in this manner. The cash which used to be a major component in the transaction will be a scarce commodity for all time to come now. And if that thing happens, many people who are buying property with 60, 40, 50, 50, mm -hmm. or 30, 70, whatever it is, probably that will be now a matter of past. That will not be possible. Now, in that reaction, I believe the whole scenario, as I see, changing it up and more and more property real estate is going to have a big challenge in the times to come mm. because it is a major source of investment of the black money nobody can deny that fact right. and if that money is drained out or sucked out of that uh, activity commercial activity mm. in the real estate sector then real estate sector will pass through a very difficult phase in the next three years and this penami property protection act will discourage anybody now in the future to make an investment in the real estate. Mm -hmm. So having sucked out the money, which was part of the major part of the funding of the property, having sucked out the future investors also out of that system and, and that activity, I believe that's a major change which is going to happen on and that. that indeed will uh, that's a the happen or doubt. All I right. believe that's a, that's a challenge which mm -hmm. will come to the economy and which will come to the real estate sector. And it, it has to go a major overhauling uh, over period. All right. Um, on that note, we'll end this edition of uh, Late Edition this evening. Thank you so much.